getting a baseball dropped every 10 minutes. <laughs> my mom asked me. My mom asked me. <laughs> Hello, citizens of Earth. How are you doing today? You okay? I hope you're good. And if not, it'll get better or it won't. Welcome to another episode of Guys We Fruitfully Hugged. Uh, it's the anti slut Mean Podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome. If you want to email us, it's sorry about last night's show at gmail.com. Make that subject line interesting, it's but correct, juicy. accurate, please. Mm. Give us some juice. Don't fucking bait and switch us. Juicy uh, tea. Yes. So this subject line is I slept in the same bed as my best friend's best friend. Friend. Oh, my boyfriend's. boyfriend's. My boyfriend's best friend. Am I wrong? But probably. Uh, you're wrong and you're a whore. I, I mean, see. weird. Okay. I would appreciate your advice and insight on my current situation. I, female 27, have been dating uh, B, male 36, for almost a year. He has an awesome friend group and we are happy together. He has a friend, C, male 31, that has been a, a pretty chaotic dating life and I always seem to give him advice. Mm. We have become friends too, like brother and sister. B felt like C and I were getting too close, but I try to ensure that I have no feelings for him and think of him as a friend. Yeah, see something to stay bed together after that. <laughs> cool. C is pretty notorious for being overbearing with gals. All my girlfriends call him a dork. Um, <laughs> So we got asked to go to a birthday party for M, female, 30, 30. There's too many letters in this email already. We were both excited, but realized B would be out of town. He told me I could still go. So your boyfriend said that you gave still, you permission. Yeah, gave you permission to go to a party. That's strange. Okay. Yay. <laughs> I've gotten, but I guess it's like his friend group. So I understand. Mm. Uh, I've gotten close to his friend group and had no problem going alone. Her birthday was a party bus and we stopped at cool. multiple bars after the bus be hosted uh, after hours. Her husband and her have a nice house with a cool karaoke setup. So I decided to go at around two 30. I realized I couldn't get an Uber. Yay. Midwest cities. So her husband set up a bed for me. Meanwhile, C also attends the after party. It gets a little hazy, uh, but I told C he could sleep in the bed with me with a pillow fort between us. I grew up with two brothers and it was pretty common to share beds. Anyway, he follows me up, but sharing your bed with your brother is much uh, different than your boyfriend. Because I best think friend. we can pretty much trust that you're not going to fuck your brother. I mean, you're and in the Midwest, you, but yeah. <laughs> and if you do like, that's like, there's a larger a whole issue different there, yeah. you know? Anyway, he follows me up and we lay down. He doesn't try to touch me, but about two what to 10 gent. minutes in, I realized it was probably not okay and told him that he should sleep on the ground or another couch. He said yes and left, but also made the comment, you're such a good girlfriend. Ew. B came back from being out of town. And he asked if I slept there. He also found out C was there. So I told him the story. He, of course, freaked out. We were on the verge of breaking up, but he said he will get over it. Okay. He was cheated on, so I know okay. this looks bad. So yeah. what are your thoughts? Can we still hang out with C? B has not spoken to C about, nor, ha nor have I. I love this friend group, and I don't want to start drama, but I do want to respect my boyfriend. We are also on the same uh, volleyball team this summer. Ha, so that also makes it awkward. Attached our photos. C is the blonde one. Yeah, we have to see how hot this guy is, basically. Mm. Slightly hotter than your boyfriend? I don't know. I can't really tell. It depends on the personalities. I can't tell in a picture. Uh, You're holding your boyfriend's stomach like he's expecting. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little weird. I wouldn't be jealous of this this guy. This guy looks weird. Yeah. 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 He's like a Napoleon Dynamite type. Yeah. 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 But, he's like a beefy Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. But yeah. I'm sure your boyfriend is not taking that into consideration. It's probably just reacting off of his feelings of him asking asking you or, or uh, indicating that he noticed you guys were close that it was weird then the bed thing eh, it's that's a one-two punch that's like ah, i don't know yeah he was like he was already on his radar to be wary of this guy also i just don't understand like okay like and also like why why did you turn into this friend's fucking personal therapist yeah like also how did that happen right you know right it's like it's bad enough when when we do it for guys who are providing things for us like this guy's not you're not even fucking this guy why are you yeah. giving us all this free therapy it's right. weird I would just say to your boyfriend like you're you're really sorry you understand how that looks 
looks, especially given the conversation that you had previous about this particular guy and that it, it won't happen again. I mean, it, but it's up to him to get over it. You know what I mean? If he wants to continue the relationship, he has to, you know, do so in good faith and, and move on from that after you've talked about it. Yeah. Listen, like you didn't do like anything wrong, but like, did you do something that's like weird that like, I wouldn't have loved if it was like the tables were turned for me. Yeah. True. Yeah. Like I've totally slept in uh, a bed with someone. Like it wasn't when I was dating someone, but I, me and me and uh, Shane Smith, we shared a bed on the road and I, uh, we just went to bed. Um, but then I put up a, a pillow for it. Cause I thought it would make him comfortable. And then he would, then he was just like offended. <laughs> And I was like, I wasn't trying to offend you. I was just trying to like make it make like, space. No, I, I don't know. I didn't know what to do. I don't right, know. I, right. was just try- I was trying to make it more comfortable for were everybody. Were you dating somebody? No, or, I don't think oh. either of us were dating anyone at the okay. ta- time. I don't think. I've never non-sexually laid in bed with a guy. Yeah. I mean, Ever. I really, I have. I don't think so. I mean, I mean, when I was a kid, like my brother and stuff, and I would share beds on vacation and stuff, but uh, huh. I don't think so. Yeah. I have, and I've, but I've also like. Um, oh wait, no, Justin Silver. I have. Sorry. Yeah, and I've, and I, I mean, obviously Tommy, but that's a little different. But you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like it is, it is possible, but I think like probably also like less possible when you guys are dr- out drinking, which is I'm guessing what's happened. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it's like I've shared be- beds non sexually with guys when I was sober. Right. But same. To get same. in a bed yeah. with someone drunk, I think, is a different thing yeah. because you've added a variable for it, and also yeah. like that comment he made, like you're such a good girl- girlfriend. Like this That's guy weird. to me is like not he. The problem is he, he's not super trustworthy, and guys are better at reading their guy friends. So like you're coming into it with yes. me. Be like this like pure girly thoughts and but like the the reason your boyfriend is it, it, like feels weird is not because he doesn't trust you it's because he doesn't trust this friend and i would and that's your that's your boyfriend's friend so i would go with his read on his own friend not your read on the yeah friend. that's yeah, a, yeah. such a good point yeah. yeah they're definitely guys that's why guys get guys like, know guys know how bad guys can be yeah yeah, yeah. especially even their closest friends Ex- well exactly There's some people you're just like this is a that guy's, a, uh, that guy guy's you an animal. Your girlfriend around, but yeah. even you know? we have that. We, Christina and I have yeah. talked about that multiple times. Being female comedians, we have plenty. We have so many guy friends who we love, but we would never date them, and we would never want our friends to no. date them because yeah. they Disaster are not zone. good partners. Right. No. They're fu- they're good friends, but they're not good partners. And I think those are two completely different roles that you're playing. Yes, yes. So yes. like oh maybe this God, this guy yes. is a, is like a good friend, but he's not trustworthy with women. And also, you kind of brought to the picture like this guy has like a weird track uh, record with women to begin with. Like your boyfriend, I think probably knows some stuff about his guy friend that you don't know that because of guy code, he's not going to tell you, but that means he doesn't want, he doesn't want, you know, he's not going to risk letting this guy around you too close. Yeah. So I think just like create a little distance. It doesn't mean things have to be weird, but it's just like, you know, rebuild the trust. Yeah. Yeah. Rebuild the trust. You didn't really do anything crazy. So he should be able to get over this, but like you, I think you're being a little too lackadaisical about everything. And also just like in general, like I'm sure like it is your friend group now and stuff, but like, you know, it was his friends first. And I think some people are more like um, territorial about that. Like, I'm definitely more territorial about my friends. Like, I don't I never want my fucking partner to integrate so well into my friend group that he feels like he's on the same level of me as me and my friend group. That would be very annoying. OK, <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't you don't make up for 10, 15, 20 years in like a, a year and a half. That's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't replace that. Guys, come see us live. Toronto, I'm headlining in you. July 28th and 29th. Los Angeles, I'm headlining the Comedy Store for one night only. Wednesday, August 2nd. Uh, San Diego, August 3rd, 4th, and 5th. I'm headlining American Comedy Company. And I'll be in Dallas, Texas, August 11th and 12th. All tickets for those shows are available on ChristinaHutchinson.com. And I have a Patreon where I do uh, weekly Zoom therapy and quotes because I'm not a licensed therapist. But I facilitate like a group discussion where we just talk about whatever the fuck's on your mind. And I ask questions and we all kind of give advice if we're, if we're in a situation that we've experienced something similar. Uh, and it's really cool. And the audio gets uploaded only to Patreon. So you can listen to it even if you didn't attend. It's patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. It's for now just five bucks a month. So sign up. And then of course you can listen to Without a Country where I uh, 
I filter the news for you. I do all the work for you. I read all the stuff. I find which uh, uh, places did the best coverage of a story. I compare. I can trust. I let you know what you need to know for that week so you don't sound like a dumb, dumb cunt. Um, <laughs> and that's called Without a Country. It comes out everywhere uh, on Wednesdays. You can also watch the live stream on Gas Digital Network Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a grand old time. We we uh, we do, we do it all over there. So follow that. Subscribe on YouTube. And uh, of course, follow us on social media. So many people are like fans. They come to the shows and you're not following us on social media. If you have a social media account, even if you're not active on it, it just is like a free thing that means a lot. It helps with ticket sales. It helps with opportunities, all these kinds of things. So just give us a follow if you haven't already and you've been a longtime listener. It it like crushes my soul when someone's like, I love you. I'm such a fan. And then like I go and they're not following me. It's like, oh my God, Uh, it's like one click like really makes a difference. It's 2023. We need followers. You gotta do this for us. Please, please, please. Uh, so I'm at Philanthropy Gal on all social media. I'm at Christina Hutch. Go ahead, Mike. And I'm I'm at, I'm at Mike Cascarelli. And we're at Guys We Fucked Without the You in Fucked as a Duo. Yeah, and make sure this is coming now next week. Okay, well, if you you if you didn't already catch our live episode of Guys We Fucked, I meant to re- promote that. To, uh, oh, wait, no. It would, wouldn't have been too late anyway. Mm. Um, go on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Guys We Fucked Without the You in Fucked. That's where you can watch every episode of Guys We Fucked, but we also do these very special um, live call-in episodes once a month where we have a phone lines open and people call in with some very interesting problems. So you can go and watch that on YouTube right now. You got a couple you can binge. We have old episodes of Did That Help? We have the Dumb Bitch Woo Woo Hour. We have a lot of free content. Of content. And of course, our comedy special, our special day, if you haven't already listen, I mean, watch that. Uh, take a take a gander at that. Yeah, so, baby. Um, all right. So, oh, you have a story that you want to tell. a quick one. I yes. did something dumb. What did oh, you I do? I'm stupid. Oh, no. Oh, man. I want to get, you know, a lot of times it's weird to give advice weekly for 10 years because then you're like, oh, when you do something that goes against your own advice, you're yeah. like, Idiot. yeah. I, uh, my, my boyfriend's renovating his apartment. And so we live a block away from each other. And so he's been staying at my place. And, mm-hmm. but I, you know, on, on certain days, I'll have like chunks of time where I'm like, oh, I can go over and help because I love organizing and cleaning and stuff. And it's been cool to watch the renovation take place because it's a lot, of, it's a lot of work and there's a lot of stuff that can happen uh, in, in between it. But, um, it's noisy. Yeah, yeah, he, <laughs> yes. Um, and the yeah, what he's doing is not as intense as what uh, was happening in your building. But um, I, I was in his room, kind of cleaning stuff, uh, trying to get trying to get it cleared. And there was a bag, there was a bag, and it looked like trash because it had like a like an empty oh, tea bag. Oh, this, 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 this old Got a sack feeling. of love letters. Eh. <laughs> well, there was what well, there was empty plastic containers in it. But then there was also a notebook in it. Oh, no. And I was like, this looks like trash, but it's a notebook. It can't be trash. So I opened it real quick and oh. I was like, no, it's not trash. And I saw my name. It was a journal. And I was like, okay. That's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then I closed it. Well, it depends it. on what was in it. I closed it. And I was like, oh, shit. Sorry to myself. He was he was on the other side of the he was in the he was in the kitchen. This is the opposite ends of his wow, apartment. Wow. Must be a big apartment that you feel comfortable going in the journal with him in the apartment. Well, I wasn't comfortable with it that would be but i, I did I, it my heart would be beating yeah. okay yo i and i put it i was like oh shit okay so some of this is trash and some's not and i knew the journal wasn't and so whatever and then and then i don't man i was just like oh what did what he say in it and i fucking mm. read it oh uh, does he, he know Oh, he caught me. Oh! oh my God. Well, he caught me twice. Oh, so my he... God. oh my God. This is like a horror movie. First, he comes back, oh. and I had it all, and I was like, I closed it real quick, and I and he was like, hey, what's up? And I was like, oh, I'm just organizing this. Is this bad trash? And he's like, no. I mean, I was like, there's tea bag, whatever. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. And then he went back, and I, 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 I it's... Uh, snooping like I've done it a, I've done it a couple times in my life you guys all do this I don't because it it, it it's, breaks it's not, my heart every time yeah, it's all, it's, it's, I well, do not do it's it it's a huge violation of the person's privacy and a lot of times we hear stories of women like I had a feeling and then they found something and yes but to me one of my mantras I have a lot of mantras that I say to myself pretty much daily and one of them is Please every make a video. <laughs> every, <laughs> everything I know is revealed to me everything I need to know is revealed to me Anything I need to know is revealed to me. I say that whenever I get like an urge to 
do anything that I'm like, Christina, stop. This is, is this coming from a place of love or fear? Obviously fear. That's an easy answer for me. And so, but also for that mantra, like, uh, like I think uh, like Aliza, the uh, astrologer that we had on, there's a similar one that she uses, but it's not only that like everything you need to know will be revealed to you, but additionally will be revealed to you when you, when need, you, need, to, you need to know it. And for me, when I yeah. say that mantra, I mean that yeah. part. So I, I just that's don't like say a that really part. important part right. of it. It's like, you'll, you'll get, you'll learn you'll the get it you when need you need to know to. when you need to know it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really do believe that. And it's a much, it, it, to me, I have like FOMO. I have all these, I have all these anxieties that that mantra in particular really helps personality with. personality disorder is FOMO. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. It's, I that's why I love COVID. FOMO, so I have to be invited. My therapist told me I had it. So if you don't invite me, you hate me. And like, I can, we can't be friends. Um, that's why, one of the reasons why I loved COVID so much, um, there's nothing to miss out on. Was Everyone nice. was at home. I cannot tell you, that was the least anxious period of my fucking life. Because there was nothing to do. You just were in your house. But it was amazing for me, because for me, I don't have FOMO, but I was like, I, you know, have this like overachieving thing. And I was like, I can just relax. I don't have to overachieve because no one can achieve anything. And then people found out, figured out ways to achieve stuff and became TikTok stars. And yeah. I, I like, um, now I'm like beating yeah, myself fuck. up. I was like, fuck, I really, I actually, the one time when I should have been overachieving, I was just having a good time. And, well, I, and I fucked up. Well, that was good for your soul, though, uh, and your spirit. Who cares about my soul? That's a, <laughs> a ridiculous nonsense. Um, Can't write that on a resume. Has a good soul. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Going into the trash. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, AKA doesn't work. Uh, that's what that means on a resume. Um, Lazy bones. <laughs> yeah, so he came in, and, and I like kind of had, and I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, and I got so scared. I was like, oh, my God, that was so close. That was, oh, Christina, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then 20 minutes, he went back to the kitchen, and I was cleaning. And, you, and at that time he really didn't know no i don't think so okay. he would have said something we're very open we're very we're, we're I, I really love our communication has gone through a lot of eras eras of communication like errors but like taylor swift <laughs> tour <Yeah. laughs> true but we're in a good era right now great um and so you're I, in lover <laughs> i felt yes i oh, love that song so much um i felt like oh god christina and then i don't know like i just i did it again <laughs> he was there he's in the house and i was like what do you do as i was Why doing it i was like what are you fucking until doing he was like gone and they were alone and now you know where it because is because that because part of me uh, was like bitch not, you deserve patient. to get caught and I'm not patient. You're not patient. Never, no, yeah. but also like, I don't want to be alone with, I don't, I mean, I, he had, he's like, I said, he's staying at my place. So he has journals, but I don't go through them. That's like awful. Like I don't, and I don't. Right. Um, and it feels gross and nasty, but for some reason I saw my name and I just wanted to yeah, look at what he it's said. It's hard when you see your name. Oh my God. And then, mm -hmm. and then I really, and then I op reopened it like 20 minutes later. And then I started looking. His handwriting, it was hard to read. So and it took was, you some time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I read some stuff, but it was, yeah. And then I and I couldn't find the part where, we, where I saw my name. So I was trying to look for it. And then I, there was, uh, and I, and I had it in my hands and he came back to the room again and I closed it and he goes, were you just looking through my journal? And I go, Ooh. no. And he goes, yes, you were. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I was. Oh my God. So he's like, that's a really big violation of my privacy. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I felt so fucking bad. Yeah. And then he was like, it's, and I was like, I, I saw my name and I got curious, but your handwriting's really bad and I couldn't read it and I tried mm -hmm. to find it again. And I'm so, it was like Chunk from the Goonies being like, when I was eight, I stole a thing of uh, Ben and Jerry's <laughs> ice cream. I just, it was awful. It, I felt so bad. And I'm like, mm. Christina, but there was yeah. this moment that second time I was looking where I felt like a crack addict must feel where I'm yeah. like, I got the score. Like right. time yeah. stopped. Yeah, that's like Nothing caught, yeah. else existed. <laughs> and I was like, I'm in. Like I was trying to get into an underground realm or something. And yeah, it was, it was terrible. And I, 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 I pro apologize profusely. I felt so bad, but I was like, you fucking idiot, Christina. He, he almost caught you doing it. Yeah. And then you fucking did it again. Yeah. God damn it. New York apartments aren't big enough for snooping when the person's in there with you. <sighs> It's a bold move, man. That was awful. Yeah. I the mean, only kind of snooping that I regularly do is I do Google uh, people's medication because that's a safety precaution. Oh, I fucking yeah. go in that medicine cabinet. What is this for? And then, <laughs> and then I, cause I'm going to be alone with a fucking man. They're terrifying. I got to know what you're on. True. Fair. Okay. And I'm not going to hold it against you, but I need to fucking know. Yeah. Okay. But would you ask first? Like are you on any meds or no? 
What? No, okay. no, I just, just go. Like, I don't think I, I just I mean, go. How, and, when uh, do you get asked? Is it snooping <laughs> if you look in the medicine cabinet? I guess this so. is a safety precaution. I don't care. And yeah. I think, think everyone. I think women. Women, I think, will use the that that excuse for other various types of snooping and and um, label it like an emotional safety precaution. But yeah, um, which again, you just fucking talk to the person you're dating. But yeah, I felt I I apologize, and I was like, I'm sorry. I'm only, I'm going to say sorry one more time and I swear I'll, I'll drop it, but I'm so sorry. I'm so such a violation. You're, I'm so sorry. I'd be so pissed if you did that to me. I'm so sorry. But then I thought about it. I actually wouldn't be pissed if you read my journals. Well, cause and it would just be like up? his name with hearts around. <laughs> 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 Which, what's more embarrassing? <laughs> maybe mine. <laughs> now, maybe I would be pissed, actually. Wait, so uh, did he accept your apology? He did. He did. He was like, it's okay. You were curious. I told him, I was like, I saw my name. He's like, you were curious. It's okay. It's Every, everybody gets do. curious. Like, it's not out of your, it's like not out of your character and like knowing you as long <laughs> as he has, I feel like it's like, it doesn't <sighs> feel like malicious, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It certainly wasn't. But, but oh, yeah. more importantly, did you find anything interesting? I mean, there's some stuff said about people, about oh. women that I found. I was like, okay. Oh, but you didn't find any, because but you didn't get any of the juicy stuff about you. No, no, I couldn't mm. find it, but I will not look again. My God, God I felt it. so guilty. Oh, fuck. I haven't done something that I felt that guilty about. I don't know. It's like since I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, I felt so guilty. Yeah. <sighs> but it's done with. But, but would you have felt guilty if he didn't catch you? No. Yeah. So there you go. But I'm glad he caught me because would I have like looked again? Maybe for sure. Yeah. I will never do that ever again. Well, I'm are so you, glad I got caught. Like, are you like are you afraid that it made him see you like in a different light? At first, yes. I was. I started shaking. I was like, I was like, I was holding. I was like, I'm sorry. Here, here you go. Here's your journal back. Oh, I was no. shaking because I was like, oh my god. You know, when you have to, you earn a person's trust, but then when there's a fault in sure. the trust, you have to rebuild it. And sure. so, and then I was Googling like, how do you apologize to someone fully after looking through their journal? But it's like, no, bitch, you, you know, you know how to apologize. And I did. It was, it was, I meant it. And it was very like heartfelt. And he, and he was like, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Right. He's like, you're a good person. It's okay. I'm like, I know, but it's such a bad thing. I do. So yeah. Terrible. It, is, it is. When you see your own name, that is, that's, that, that's a difficult one. Yeah. Also, well, I mean, he should put a lock on it, like a little, like a real little diary. Also, I just shouldn't read it. No, 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 you shouldn't. Yeah. But also, like I, I, like, but because human curiosity is as powerful as it is, like so powerful. I hide, like, I mean, I have like a list of things that need to be put away when a boyfriend is coming over. Really? And it's not like dildos. It's like, I, it, a lot of it is like private like I, i'll write, write like i have like notes to myself but like they truly are just to me they're not like performative to me where people are you know like <laughs> you just lay it on the couch like Oops. some people like have like post-its out like it's like work out five times this week and it's like is this for you or is this for me yeah you know is this for guests <laughs> yeah but like i have like i have things around my house that are really just for me so those things like I actually forgot to take I, something, yeah. uh, 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 like to take something off my like Chalkboard. my wall when the housekeepers came, and I was like, oh, I didn't, yeah, they, I didn't want them to see this. They're gonna fucking Instagram themselves in front of it. No. I just didn't want them to see that. Like yeah. I, I don't want to like get like. I, I do have a lot of inspirational sticky notes that I have over my, uh, not so much in this apartment, but my old two apartments, and I would always forget to take them down when a guy would come over, or like I'm like, yeah. fucking Christ, and then I'd just be in the bathroom peeing, and someone's like. What did you? What is this? I'm like nothing. Stop. Yeah. yeah. Or like I have a, like a, I have like a you know a book next to my bed. It's like why, why men are the devil, and it's like we'll put that away. Yeah. Before yeah, yeah. A yeah, guy yeah. comes. Yeah. Guys don't like that. A hilarious time. Was on that, that text book. message that just came in? I, just I was can't. that book. <laughs> 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 Yeah, no, I was like, we both we were, we were both just like summoning people and then they're texting us at <laughs> yeah. that time. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. Have you have you ever got caught reading or doing something? No, like that? I've I'm very not that I guys been don't with snoop though. I almost wish they would. I wish you'd be god, so curious. I mean, we no, no, no. Christina, guys snoop. Are you fucking do? kidding me? Really? But we don't snoop. I, I that makes me feel I better. I've, I've I've had the I've played your boyfriend's role many a time, gotten livid at boyfriends for reading my journal. Wow. Fucking livid. Wow. I, I've never read though I, I snoop like on Instagram and stuff like that. That's not but snooping. It's public. It's snooping if you're on her account. He goes. Wait, wait, he what goes. I just like, went to her page. No, I was like, snooping like a bad boy. If oh, you, you have mean her, you went to her the URL that's public. Yeah, no. I'm snooping is like you going through her private thing. So her Instagram DMs. Oh, right. You're talking her about phone. stalking. 
You're talking about internet stalking, which is different than snooping. Were you I, just looking at somebody's Instagram is just looking at somebody's Instagram. I feel like if you're looking obsessively, though, like it can um, come into like, you know, like inter internet stalking, especially like if you guys like don't have a relationship anymore. Oh, yeah. Or True. then when you get, you know, That's when, weird. when you get, weird. start getting into the territory of like you're using like the different apps to watch people's stories anonymously. Well, mm. that's some shit. I've never done that. I mean, I, I, do that I, I <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> I've never I've never read a partner's uh, anything private. I've actually have you been like, have you had the opportunity to? Yeah, I think I told the story on this show about the time that um, when I was with Lex still she got crazy that it's sent. about Who's her? That? I, there's one person that I can have stories about. Wow. There's literally one person. Take a shot every time he says one. Well, <laughs> it's not even, nipple story of it, the last episode. It makes me look bad. It, it's uh, that's why we like the stories. Yay, but give the, it to us. It was the, I think I told it already, but like a friend of the show and friend of mine, Erica Spera was kind of friends <laughs> with both of us. Friend of the show. Uh, we love she, Erica. <laughs> she um she sent uh she had flowers showed up at our apartment one day oh right when we were fighting yes. oh yeah. you've told that the story told a thousand times yeah. when, when I read that when I yeah it was yes, from her dad it was from her dad yes. we all right. know the yeah, fuck you got blew pissed. up it was right. huge that's not snooping oh you read the card but I didn't read the card that's why because I didn't snoop I could have read the card you should have read said, the card and then not, you wouldn't get pissed to me it felt like a violation it's like reading someone's mail or something yeah so no, on it principle, is, it's a federal offense right yes right there so, is yeah but I, I guess the flowers aren't sent via USPS so maybe it's not with yeah. my ex um, with Steve and I, I I would look at his porn searches because I just wanted to see, but it was more like I want to see what you're into. But then I found, and I still haven't gotten to the bottom of this and I never will. He had an email account that was like a name that wasn't his that he signed on to. And I'm like, the fuck you doing with that? And I remember once, cause I was on the his computer a lot. We were, I was on his office computer a lot. And, um, and I would sign in and out of my Gmail, like with him there. And I'm like, who? And I asked, I was like, who the fuck's this? He goes, uh, uh, uh. And I'm like, who the fuck is this? Just say it's my friend. Like you make up something quick. Yep, you say, yep. oh, it's my friend who logged on on my account. There you and, go. Yeah, and it was yeah. so suspicious that I was like, I'm probably never going to get to the bottom of that, but I really want to. Oh, the fuck you doing with that email account? That would keep me up at night. That it, it, it yeah. We were, it was right, right, like shortly before we broke up. So I was like, ah, fuck, I won't ever get to that mystery. Mm. I really wanted to figure it out. Damn. So, to the point where it was so weird that I was like, I I think I forgot to like snoop again, but I probably would have because uh, his reaction was so weird. And I was like, what? Yeah. And I went, wait, what is that? And he's like, no. And he kept panicking. I'm like, oh, my friend, what you doing? <laughs> What's that email do? Mm. Well, Damn. Yeah. Fascinating. I know. I want to know. I still want to know so bad. It reignited my curiosity. When I get curious, though, oh, I'm so fucking curious about stuff. It gets me in trouble. I mean, just that. It's an innocent thing, but like, oh, my curiosity. It's really hard. It's, I, I, yeah, it was really, it's really hard. Yeah, but it's like, I mean, do any of the things that you learned in your boyfriend's journal, do you wish that you didn't know? No. Okay. They were just like, yeah, he's just writing what you one writes in a journal about somebody, you know, mm -hmm. like it's not, it wasn't anything like <gasps> at all. At, at all. No, and like I said, like I couldn't get a lot. Like, if anything was like so complimentary about like another woman. There were, were like, there were. Yeah. Like, nah, hmm. but that doesn't bother me. Cause it was, yeah, that didn't bother me. Um, yeah. Sometimes I've, I've heard. Yeah. No, nah, I've not really heard a person I was dating say something about another woman or read something that they said about another woman that I'm like, oh, I can't, I'll never fucking unhear that. I don't think. I haven't. No one holds a candle to me. That's not a problem. Yeah, <laughs> nice. No one holds a candle. I really to me. don't believe. I go, yeah, nothing's affecting me. That's that's totally fine. Good for you. Um. So okay. So wait. Going on to the the three the three month rule. This is just something that was like floating around TikTok, and so then my old ass got interested in what it was because I was like, what are the children saying? Yeah, like the the three month rule was like trending. Um. But and I was like reading like what is this? I'm literally on like a like a fucking like college website right now reading about this. <laughs> Um, and it's uh, you know it, it, this is my favorite sentence it goes as I said the three month rule is nothing new with articles dating back to the 2010s like it's olden oh, times oh wow. relic kids like it's fucking olden times like it's just dinosaur an archaeologist it? dusting off <laughs> fucking relics that's hilarious like written in the bible oh my god half my life ago the three month rule has been a staple in the dating game for quite some time the Never rule heard of it until now. the rule is this three months is the turning point for a relationship after three months you'll be able to tell if they're actually into you and whether or not you need to cut the cord 
in short, mm. in three months, the truth comes out. And they're kind of like, it, 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 I, like I like they're presenting it as this large theory, but really, it, 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 when you boil it down, it's just the theory is that like you can't really fake something or pretend to be mm. a caliber of person that you are not, and the cracks will start to show in three months. Yes, because I imagine if, if you're being loved bombed, I don't think that can last longer than three months. Yeah, I've so never, you, you been, would are, I've already never been, been love away. bombed longer than that. Yeah. I've only been love bombed like once. I mean, it's hard though because uh, I also date a lot of addicts, and addicts just like kind of like inherently love, love. love bomb because they don't know like they don't know a normal amount to do anything, yeah. and that includes love. Yeah, and so I've actually like just told voice people, I'm like, you're gonna fucking on a detox right now. Yeah, yeah. You gotta fucking yeah. go to a detox. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's always like when someone's interested in you, you'll know, right? So it's like that the three months is enough time for them to do the fade away if they're gonna but do it. But sometimes with straight men, like especially who are avoidant, you actually don't. So I don't really? even know if I agree with that. Really? I don't know. Every guy I've dated that where I'm like, oh, they when they fade out, I, I feel it immediately. I also have like an... Uh, I hate how like psychic I get with the men that I'm sleeping with. It's fucking annoying. I wish I could turn it off, but I, I, they don't even have to talk to me or send me a text or a call or any, I don't even have to look at their social media. I know when they met someone. Oh, well, yeah, I have that too, but I'm like, I think, but it's, but I like, I disagree with that because it's like the, 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 so when if you, you know, like them, just you'll because know. like, I feel like the boyfriend who loved me the most was the worst at showing it. Oh, and like, I okay. learned how to interpret his like language but like to the untrained eye, like oh, okay. it was that other thing, like when like other people are like, oh, he like loves you so much. And I'm like, oh, it'd be nice if he voiced that. Right, I mean, like, right. I knew it to be so, <laughs> oh, but like, it? right. Yeah. yeah. It was like, I could see someone getting very insecure and self-conscious dating this person. I see. Right. Because the way, yeah. Because yeah. he wasn't showering you. Right. And I, but I understood it because it's like the same way that I am. So it felt like familiar to me, mm. I suppose, because I do it the same way. Like I get, you know, and I also get suffocated so easily. So I'd rather have someone give me a little less than too much. Yeah. Quite honestly. I think like constant, like if you're constantly communicating and then it just stops one day. I mean, that's, that's how you know. That's more what I mean. Like right. if they're not reaching, if they stopped reaching out to you altogether when you had some form of constant communication. Really? That's happened? Just someone stopped like texting you? Well, not to not to me, but like to my, fr like a lot of my single girlfriends will tell me like my one girlfriend who's single who really like wants a husband. Like she wants a partner because she wants to have a family. Oh, she's too thirsty. I don't know though. I mean, she she's, I don't think so. Like, but like a husband. But uh, I don't think she said like she, okay. marriage is part of her goal. And she right. like, she'll go on dates with people that she meets on these dating apps that like also say like, I want to be married one day. So like, it's, you know, it's the one it's day. always one day. For with men, man. They, mean, like, they mean on my 55th birthday. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> when you're old and dried up. So oops, I got a date 25 year old, I guess. Ah, whoopsies. Um, but yeah, she, she was dating. She was uh, going on dates with this guy. And then, they actually re reconnected after uh, going on two dates two years ago or something like oh, that. Oh, wow. And, uh, and then she described the date and everything and their communication. And I was like, oh my God, he really likes you. Sounds like, oh, he, you guys sound like a really good fit. And then just stopped talking to her and like, very, like said, oh, let's go on a date on Tuesday. And then just stopped, like never confirmed the day of. And she's like, well, I'm not texting him. He's got to text me. I'm like, yes, that's correct. And then he just never did. I'm like, okay, well, I really thought that guy was into you, but these actions are saying no. Can I just tell That's you? That's so weird. I have literally an elephant graveyard. I was looking at it yesterday. Oh. Uh, like, like I went back to 2021, I guess, in my phone of just all the numbers that aren't saved. Sunday of, fun day. Of, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It I'm is. listening to Randy Newman. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Wishing just, of better times. <laughs> it's all these numbers of, of like, like, like hinge and bumble conversations that like went nowhere. Yeah. Like, I've had people could go like just completely ghost like while I'm still in the app, but Oh no, we this was never, this was like yeah. this you took was it to like, text. It was there were some that were just like that was like me confirming like hey are we still on for tomorrow? Never heard back or the girl asking hey are we and just like you, and you didn't text back. I guess so. Yeah, yeah we gotta start treating each other that. like people again. Yeah, let's start doing that, guys. I just let's be, just be courteous. Like you're gonna feel better about yourself. What's the worst yeah. that could happen if you're honest and courteous? If they freak out, that's on them. If you were respectful and polite. They have every right to freak out if they have emotional issues that they have to deal with that have nothing to do with you. It's so LA to be like, 
make a date that you have no intention on going on. I would on. never oh, totally. do that. Like, it's so weird. I would never do that. If anything, I would just feel like I would wake up and go, I don't really feel like doing that today. But like, I would never say, let's do a thing. And then when I didn't want to do it. Yeah. That's crazy to me. That's absolutely insane. And I told it. What do you, why is that? <laughs> Corinne is just giving me like, like I, a stern look. I just don't. I, I, why, I just, why would you do that? Like, don't I don't you, get it. Yeah. That's not like. A, a fun way to operate in the world. You're, that's so stressful. I can tell if, if we're talking about me specifically, it's not a common practice. I honestly had ra- not even realized that I had done that a few times to some of these women. <laughs> a few yeah. times. Yeah. Well, it's just like I said, it was that was it was that period. You have a lot of on time. your plate. You seem like you have a lot of dating going on, so I, you might just like mix up your calendars and stuff. <laughs> yeah, had might a be lot true, but especially in 2021, that was like the post-COVID summer of like everybody's. Love. Yeah, you just but not you, for my people were just putting so many dates on the calendar. I feel like, and yeah, yeah, just like going to some, not going to others. But wow, I would never do that because then know. the looming, the looming thought of I have to cancel, I have to cancel, I have yeah. to cancel would fucking yeah. distract me from anything I had to do. Yeah, yeah. that's not fun. I'm sorry you went through that. Guys, pain guys, that you guys caused yourself. let's start being honest <laughs> with each other. Even on dating apps, it's a, it's so low stakes. You <laughs> might as well don't <laughs> ghost. How many days did you go on this weekend, Michael? No, no, I was in Jersey. Oh, because you were in Jersey. With your yeah, family. Yeah, I didn't go Thank God. I've been, I slowed down quite a bit. Yeah, because we... Full stop? Kept, kept going Not full you. stop, but like I've, I've, I've been way, way more intentional about who I actually go out with because I'm just so busy with, with like the, with, with work. Yeah. Every time I used to get hard. on the dating apps, I would say to myself, okay, Christina, only swipe on yes on the people that you would be excited, excited about. Yeah. And I, every fucking time I, I, I caught myself going, ah, maybe. And I just would swipe yes on people. I'm like, I'm not excited about these fucks. Yeah. So, well, yeah, the problem gotta, is like, then sometimes I would be like, well, he's what like, if he's got a good personality. Yeah, I was like, well, he's cute it. enough that if he had a great personality, right. then I would really like him, but right. I don't know. Right. And then I was like, nah, you just have to go with like, if, yeah. you know, cause like that's what hard. Cor- yes like, with corn guy. Like I yeah. was like, yeah, hard when, we, when yes. we matched, when we matched, I was like, yes, this was my top choice. Right. I was so excited. Right. I was so excited. Only do your top choices. Yeah. 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 And that's why, and, I, and don't move out of fear because there's a there's also a fear of like, well, I want to keep swiping, but ha- like, can I go back to these guys if I like change my mind? And there's like no one hot, and then it's you, and maybe I go back to you, but nah, that's well, you a can no. pay. I know's a no. There's a there's a backwards thing, but you like you can pay. Well, you have like on most apps, you have like one or two free go backsies. Okay, and then if, if you're you not like paying, pay though, for the not... pro level, you can go back because they know that you've had that thought process mm, and they smart they tapped into it. If you're not paying for a pro account. You're not really in the game. Oh, is that mm. we didn't know that? Oh, I've had a pro. I've, I had a pro. But do for, women have pro accounts? I would have a pro account. I, I would think maybe women that are. I see a lot of the same people on these apps over the last couple of years. Wow. Literally, it's like I'll just we'll float match. In the cesspool. And it's like we've I've matched with I've matched with some women. I've heard that story. Yeah. Have you like times. ran into anybody that you're like oh, fuck? I've seen her on the dating app like a bunch. Constantly. Are you serious? Day. Running Every into day. them? Like, Running wait, into them in person. in person. Oh no, not not in person. But like, oh. yeah, there there are there are. I there saw are that once. Twenty five women like, who I just like I see Every like. Two or three months, and it's just like, hey, I missed the OK Cupid there. before it was an app. When it was just a website, you yeah. had to be on your computer to use it. It was just a great. I loved that. Okay, Cupid, like you really, there was a lot of prompts, a lot of stuff to fill out that you can do it or not, you know, and you could kind of gauge someone serious on OK Cupid because right. there's so many fucking prompts. I know. I spent like hours uh, after the Frank breakup uh, filling that out and then. And when the messages started coming in, I got freaked out and immediately turned it mm, off. Yeah, that's happened to me too. Before, there was just yeah. something about it that I was like, I don't like. I'm not this ready for love again. Feeling. Yeah. Like it was yeah. Just, I just like I was like getting inundated. It didn't. I don't know. I felt too transactional. I think is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't the like swiping. It. The swiping is just wild, and that's but that's why because I think it feels so transactional. I feel like that's why ghosting is so prevalent nowadays. But it's like ugh. Like we, I was, we were, my boyfriend and I were making this like kind of like old geezer observation, but like kids, we, we'd been around a lot of kids that were like 11, 12, like 10, 11, 12, whatever. And when I was a kid and when he, we're, he's older than me, but when we were both kids, like the respect that we were raised with, like my dad kind of raised us a little military style. We had like, we said, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. But like, Did you? you know, when there was guests over, you come down, you say hi, you're personable. And then if you want to go upstairs or, but you hang out and like, you act like a fucking person. And then we, we had been around kids that were just like, just did their own thing and didn't even acknowledge us. And it's like, yeah. wow, that's so different from how we were raised. And like, 
kind of fuck that. Like, I like making a kid be sociable. Not You don't have to hug the person. You don't have to touch them. But like, hi, how are you? Like, have a fucking conversation. You know what I mean? I don't know. Kids these days are on the screen. That was an old person uh-huh. conversation. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I, I loved, I loved talking to adults as a kid. Um, See, I don't I know if it was because I go over my, my friends' that. houses and then their kids are just nowhere to be seen. And I go, "You seem like a dysfunctional parent. This is great. Let's <laughs> pour another glass of wine." <laughs> <laughs> For me, <laughs> child. I, I like, I like that. <laughs> my, my best friend, who is a very, a very good mom, but um, I, I was over her house one day and. I was like, where's my dog? And then my dog, like her son's just like straight up feeding my dog like human, <laughs> human oh, cookies. Fuck. And I go, oh, oh no. no. Oh God. I was like, Alfred's oh, going to love, uh, Alfred's going to love this house. This is his favorite house from oh, now on. Alfred. Cause I was like, I, cause you just know that like, they were both being quiet for like five minutes. You're and like, I was something's like, something's, uh, something's up. Something's yeah. up. Right. Like immediately. And um, then I was like, oh, he's just eating cookies in the corner that like had he, like her son had like hidden, you know, like the, like the couches that you, there was like containers. Like, yeah. Yeah. In them. Mm-hmm. And it was like one of those. And I was like, fuck. Ah, little rascal. <laughs> I'm, I'm driving to my friend's house tomorrow to um, my friend Daria, who has a baby. Aww. She's like one of my, her, my friend Michelle was my first friend to have a baby, but then Daria is my second friend to have a baby. And I'm so excited to see her and meet her daughter. But I also, I told her on the phone, I was like, I'm going to, I have so many questions about motherhood. The main one is how the fuck do you have time for it? Like what I do. Well, I, she's a busy lady too. She is a busy lady and she's a bad bitch. She gets stuff done. She produces fucking Marvel movies. And I'm like, Whoa, how? Cool. Yeah, so cool. And like, she's, she's a really, married. She's a really hard worker. Uh, yeah, she's married. I just um, said cool. <laughs> yeah, we knew what that meant, Michael. Oh, um, mm-hmm. uh, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I was like, I'm going to interview you and bring my findings back to the show because I really don't know. Other than like, obviously, you have to get up early because the kid gets up early. Um, because I had another psychic reading. Um, so I just like to do those every once in a while. And um, <laughs> maintenance. Uh, I had the one, the tea leaf reading, and the guy was like, you're going to have twins, boys in like two years. And I was like, uh, what? I don't, oh, okay. And I was like, huh. Oh. And then my my boyfriend told me he got a reading in another country years ago and said, oh, the guy read my chart and said I was going to have two sons. And I, oh, I didn't tell me that yet. And I didn't tell him about my tea leaf reading. So I was like, I'm not, I'm not to tell him that but then i told him because he told me that i was like oh that's interesting and then i had another reading with a psychic over the phone who said yeah kids for you it's just not this lifetime and i was like oh okay that's cool but i'm like you know what i'm glad she said that because that made me realize i do want kids yeah i was like but you have control over yeah, this for by sure. just I'm having someone too. raw come in you yeah yeah so yeah um but i still don't understand oh, so this week we're doing kids <laughs> We gotta get yeah, the chart. Week. We gotta get the chart up. We gotta oh, get the right. chart up. I forgot that that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to like Hammett's or like one of those like school stores where they have like this the week charts that kids. you can like Velcro on. Yeah, it, yeah. And we all have to have our thing. Well, we and we got. I, I got a new car, but we're splitting it. So, um, because I wanted to get another Mustang, but um, the one the but only daddy said no. Yeah, <laughs> but daddy, I want one. Um, but the the one thing that I, really turns me off about the Mustang and turns me off in such a big way that is it is so unsafe to drive in the winter it is a fucking oh, death trap yeah, i right. almost died in that car and i lost trust with that car and for me in a car like i need to trust the car i need to feel safe in the car if i don't feel fucking safe yeah. in the car i can't enjoy it as much and from that moment on that one drive i did where i almost fucking died yeah that, that they was are not a good one. literal death traps death trap, yeah and i'm like i i can't i that was a that was like 80 percent of the reason why i didn't get another mustang um because that i i want to i have to feel safe in a car so the car we ended up getting um is beautiful it's like a luxury mini suv um and i feel like a mom in it i don't know i've never driven an suv i'm like oh shit i'm like like i'm taking but you love it i love it there you go yeah so this week i want kids (laughs) exciting yeah we'll see though maybe i'll visit my friend daria tomorrow and she'll tell me all the shit that i don't i'm like i don't want that but who knows i don't know but i I think everyone's like you know i think there are some things that are universal but i think that you know just like anything you can kind of make make it mothering your, how you, how i do yeah yeah I, and want. i also i have this vision of raising a child now where i'm like i think that's how no one there's no one way you're supposed to raise a kid but i think 
for me, the philosophy that I've locked into is, oh, you have the baby and then you just watch them become whoever they're going to become and you nurture them along the way and you support them along the way. But it's like so many times parents shape their kids and it fucks mm. them up. Yeah, like, like they try them in a d- different direction. Whether it's a career, you have to be sure, a doctor sure. or whether it's like behavior of like, don't do anything that upsets mommy. Like that, whatever, whatever way, like parents mold their kids. You kind of can't help it in, in a way, but like, destructively molding their kids. And I'm like, I think the point of having a kid is just like welcoming a person into the world and like helping that person become whoever they want to become. Right. Just don't be so loose that they don't have like, that they're fucking annoying for other people to be around. Oh no. I mean, I I would be very strict. Like, like I've talked about this with, with Colin of like, we both are like the kids not getting a screen until way late. Like it, it irks me to just walk into a restaurant and see a whole fucking family. They're all on their phones. I, uh, uh, I think it's like disgusting and repulsive. Obviously we're all doing it. So you're not a bad person if that's happening, but that's something that, mm -mm, nope, nope. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's a lot of times it's like, it's just because they're like exhausted. So they like, they I'm give sure. the kids, they're like, they like give them the screen. I think it's like first child gets no screen, then second child. Second like, child just can do like, crack you're, openly. You're coming out of your crotch and you yeah. have like one of those. Here's like, the iPad, honey, go on proof iPads <laughs> ready for them in like the plastic thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, we're done. We are done. No, but I do, I see like, I see so much value and excitement around the po- the idea of raising a child and just helping them become whoever they want. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful thing. It is, and plus, apparently, you get psychic when you give birth. So I really want to experience that too. Make sure that lead lead with that. I'll lead. The, I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll end with that for sure. <laughs> Sorry, tell, son. Tell your, tell your kid that on their birthday. <laughs> Listen, I'm a little disappointed. I didn't I, get the psychic, I was to powers psychic that I, I was looking birth. for. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, you know. Um, um, today's you know, guest. I don't know if she's psychic, but she's she definitely be, but she's definitely done a lot of work with her mind. She's done a lot of work with her mind. We had we. It's so funny because when we when we sat down to interview this woman, I had an idea where I wanted the conversation to go, and then we ended up talking about things that were just fucking fascinating and her experiences and her philosophies and the way that she communicates with her partner. I'm like, it was so refreshing to see a beautiful example of a a romantic partnership. Uh, It was really lovely. You're going to enjoy this conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show. Candice Horvath. We are here with, with, I was going to say, Hannah? No, no. Candace. 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 <laughs> Hannah Horvath is yeah, what I was going to is say. Is a character from Girls. It's Candace Horback. Oh, sorry about that. It's We're not, here. It's not leaning. I'm gonna redo it. Yeah, I know. I was. I had this scene in my head of like, I think I'm the voice of my generation. And I'm like, no, it's not that. It's not that. Great. Candace scene. Horback. Candace Horback. Not Hannah Horvath. Candace Horback. Well. <laughs> Did I get right? Yeah. Well, Hannah no, Horback. No, then I would then you said Hannah Horback. Oh, like, Hannah Horback? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be my poor name. Hannah Horback. Hannah Horback. Honestly, that's a great idea for a girl. That's good. Is there a girl's porn that you have ever like a spoof that you've ever heard of? No. No, that's like Wait, a, a girl. Yeah. That's a good business. Don't copyright idea. it because we just did. Um that's amazing. <laughs> Candace got into porn. I don't think we are. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're a little old to start now. But that who knows? No, we're too old no. for porn, too old for an abortion. You'd be so surprised. <laughs> You'd be so surprised. They're like the more mature category is really taking off. But people start at that age? Some people, yeah. Really? But like oh, yeah. mature is mm, interesting. 30, right? No, I mean like forties <sighs> and fifties. Oh, that's good. That yeah. makes me feel I just better. did like a conference um with two MILF performers and they they both like 50, 51. Oh, okay. Yeah, crushing it. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. I like yeah. to hear that. Mm-hmm. Um, so you wear so many hats, Candace. And one of them we want to talk about first because we've not had the chance to have this conversation with somebody that does these types, that that dabbles with these types of things in a more therapeutic way is um, psychedelic drugs. Can you tell us about, um, you, you lead retreats that involve no, psychedelics? No, so I don't lead them. I'm like trying to get into a space where I feel like I'm capable of leading them, but I do participate in them. Um, we're investing in this company and that's one of the modalities that it does. It's kind of hard to explain. So it's called the human promise and the idea is to provide like con context and content that helps like enlighten people and like heal them and help their spiritual growth and psychedelics is one portion of that um well what we were saying offline earlier that i think is so important is like the set and setting is so crucial Mm. and it's not right for everyone it's not right at every age all psychedelics are not created equal um i had this teacher of mine that was kind of he was relating it to regular drugs, like pharmaceutical drugs. And he's like, you don't just give an antibiotic to everyone. You don't just do surgery for everything. So everything kind of needs its own um, 
like it's like special treatment. So it's like mm -hmm. what's right for you is not necessarily right for everyone. And if you're dealing with depression versus anxiety versus PTSD, those are all different drugs or different plants that you're going to need. Um, and then you need a proper facilitator as well. So like a shaman, um, yes. maybe. I mean, I love integrating like old world uh, spirituality and then like new world medicine. So maybe having a counselor there as well. It's great if you have someone that is like, capable, like an MD in case there's any like cardiac issues or breathing issues. Mm. So taking all of that into account, I think is just like super crucial. Like they're not for yeah. everybody. And you have to have, you have to have respect for the drug, right. educate yourself on the drug and psychedelics are not, they're intense. Mm -hmm. They're intense and you can have really intense trips. And, uh, and I, there's this show on Netflix, um, called How to Change Your Mind. Love that. Michael Pollan's amazing. Yes. And it's mm -hmm. a it's a docuseries if you haven't watched it. Each mm -hmm. episode goes into a separate psychedelic. And the episode on psilocybin, they had a guy with such severe OCD that he was, he said to the camera, he's like, if this doesn't work, I'm going to kill myself because yeah. this is the worst way to live. I'm like, you know, spilling onto the lives of the people I love in a way that I don't want. Um, and then he had one therapeutic session with psilocybin and his OCD just straight up went away. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously like the kind of story that people are going to cling to and kind of push at you. Um, but what have you found um, powerful with psychedelic use for you personally? So I think when you're doing the work, it's really important to have someone there that's reminding you to look inside, right? It's so easy to take something and be like, the sky is beautiful and the earth is breathing and mm. look at that butterfly. That's awesome. Yeah, Hopefully you can get there without any psychedelics. Like you can just like kind of um, like spark that <laughs> Honestly, on a day-to-day -day basis. There are days, yeah. there are days where I like look at a leaf and I'm like, yeah. that is the most magnificent thing I've ever and seen. And that's amazing, yeah. right? Like that's just like appreciating like to be alive. Like Do how awesome like that? that is. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Christine. <laughs> you do good. Good. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like to like really go inside and have an intention, but also let go of it. So you're not trying to control the situation. I think a lot of people try to control their experience. And that mm. is definitely me. Like, I'm mm. a perfectionist or recovering perfectionist. I'm like, this is what I want to do. And I want to see all of these beautiful, like, um, like those psychedelic, you know, holograms and fractals. And I had that intention and it's not what I ended up having, having, um, but yeah, just like go in with an intention and let go and, like I think the integration process is also really important. So to like journal after and again, to have someone there to share your experience with and then they can help you kind of dissect what it was. But um, for me, I wasn't going in with, with anything like super severe, like trauma wise. It was almost like yeah. I wanted to experience a new level of joy and happiness and like what that could be. I knew that my my floor wasn't as high as I wanted it to be. Mm. So it's like not trying to like get to the ceiling, but like raise the floor. Okay. So how can I make that floor higher? And I absolutely got there and I was having, and this gets like a little bit woo. I don't know how woo your audience oh, is. We are very woo. -woo okay. So. so, um, I did kind of Eastern medicine for both of my pregnancies. I was told by multiple specialists, I can never have kids. I now have my second boy, which is amazing. And both times I kind of went into like an alternative space in order to get pregnant. Mm. Um, my most recent one was after, a psilocybin experience and I felt like I was Whoa. clinging on to some kind of whether it was like a narrative that I couldn't get pregnant or like a fear around um, maybe like having a second kid and, and just like a lot of family stuff. So I was like, I just want to release that because there's something that's like blocking the soul from coming into the world. And I kid you not, I was trying for almost a year. Um, wow. Can I ask you what was the what was the Western medicine reason that you couldn't so have children? So I have Graves disease okay. and I have PCOS and endometriosis. PC oh. So oh, okay. all of that, they're like, it's just not going to happen. My What's um, Graves disease? I don't know what that Hyperthyroid. Um, oh. and it's an autoimmune version oh. of the thyroid condition. Okay. Yeah, so it's just like overactive. So all of those things are like not the best cocktail to create a baby. So yeah. I was like, it's just not going to happen. My hormones were like non-existent. I had no progesterone. My T was super low Whoa. and you need progesterone for the egg to kind of attach mm. to the uterine lining. So there's just like, it can't happen. Yeah. Um, I did my psilocybin journey and within two weeks I was pregnant. And that was, wow. can you describe what, in, what that psilocybin journey entailed? Like one dose. And then the other thing that I find interesting about therapeutic settings with psychedelics is you wear an eye mask. Yeah. Necessary. And every other, necessary. and anytime we do it recreationally, you're not wearing an eye mask. Yeah. I don't think I've ever done a psychedelic and worn an eye mask, but I'm like, that has um, to be a totally DMT, different. You'd have to close your eyes to not, to oh, do it. Like, yeah. otherwise it doesn't, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Like, I mean, I didn't use an eye mask. I just went like this, but <laughs> in a dark room, but yeah. same concept. Yeah. The eye mask is nice because it gives you a little bit of pressure. Kind yeah. Of like those heavy blankets, like a weighted blanket. Soothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like those, but um, my experience with it. So I did like a little more than two grams. We did a tea. And the whole ritual before was about an hour. So there was um, 
like there was chanting and music and like energy release. So if you feel anger or sadness or whatever to like kind of purge that before you go into the space. And then um, my shaman was like playing his drum and his wife was singing and we just laid down on our mats and put our eye masks on Mm. and just kind of like waited for it to like kind of come on, like kick in. And Mm. I remember getting like this flash like a tiny blue almost like star showing up and then it was like whoosh I was into the universe and Mm. it was like there was no me I was just like (gasps) observing and I was like what is happening don't try to don't try to dissect it don't try to intellectualize it because I didn't want it to go away um and then mine was a lot more physical so I immediately started getting like really severe like tremors like my whole body started shaking Mm. um and then I immediately was like okay well animals in the wild do this this is how it pent up energy right we're releasing our like resetting our nervous system essentially and like getting rid of old trauma so I just let that go on for however long it was um and then I remember like seeing my so at the time I only had my one son and he I saw him come in and I was like what are you doing like you need to go back to your body like this I'm working on stuff so I like sent him away oh interesting um that's so cool yeah and then like I just the rest of it was just this overwhelming feeling of like peace and joy and that was kind of why I wanted to go in so I was like this was an incredible experience for me and then after the fact when it started to wear off like my whole body was like popping and cracking and he's like these are all releases like that's all that that is so it's like even though you didn't have this crazy visual experiences that which is what you wanted going in like you got what you were supposed to get and I think that's important too is we go Mm. in and we're like oh I want the same experience that my friend had it's like well that was their experience that's not for you so that's not what's best for you right like you never have a bad trip like you have the trip you're supposed to have yeah Mm -hmm. wow and then what you have a question Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. um, uh, and then for for the kind of group setting that you went, like, how did you decide like what group to go in? Because I think like other people's, like, if you do a, a psychedelic in a group of people yeah. who have like a negative energy, that can I've like definitely had like trips interrupted by other people's bad energy mm-hmm. or something they said, and I'm like, I am gonna <laughs> smack you in the face right now because you just ruined my trip, mm-hmm. you know, because you you put this like negative concept into my brain, yeah, and like I think there. Is is like I do have obsessive compulsive disorder but like nowhere near that story Christina shared like and I think uh but I think like uh there's something about psychedelics that almost puts you in what I would explain as an obsessive compulsive disorder state because you're going to ruminate on whatever you need to ruminate on which is like what it's living with OCD all the time mm-hmm. so it's actually there's a lot in common so it's interesting that something that makes you kind of feel obsessive can also cure that um but yeah like so how did you like kind of vet and vet like the shaman vet the setting because like there's a lot of stories about shamans Mm -hmm. touching people you know like uh, to me like as a woman like i just would never go alone at least with a male shaman like it's just not happening for me Mm -hmm. no that makes sense too and you want to make sure that you're you feel safe going into it i think setting that foundation is imperative um we were working with a shaman for years at this point so he is like family to us and we were just doing like private one-on-ones he would come over and we would do like guided meditations and sound Mm -hmm. baths and energy healing so we had been working with him personally like my husband and I Um, and then he had started like sharing that he was doing these retreats Mm -hmm. my husband had done like I think like three with him at this point Mm -hmm. and they were like men's groups so um, like I didn't go to any of those oh that's nice that they have men's retreats in the of that nature yeah Yeah. it's so so important yeah and I think like doing something similar in like the women's space would be so healing right it's like there's kind of this vulnerability that each of us can have if we're in a container that is like just shared experience of being a man or just shared experience of being a woman that maybe you wouldn't feel um, like you didn't want to like take up time or whatever the reason mm-hmm. was like it just allows it gives permission for that yeah um so like i think vetting is important is important from like knowing someone that has gone through that or like that program or that retreat center so not like googling something or finding a best-selling author and just mm-hmm. being like oh they must be good like don't necessarily let that be your bar of entry so try to find someone that you know that has pers- personal experience with that shaman right. but we were talking about recreational like i don't think that recreational like psilocybin is a good idea at all and it goes back to Ooh. you know respecting the plant i think yeah yeah there's just it's just disrespectful in my mind and it's like that's when you have like a bad trip because you're in this open portal mm. so if you're out partying you're getting everyone else's shit onto you and like mm. that's just not that's reckless in my opinion mm. so you want to be in a container where you are surrounded by people that are 
at the level that you're at and like have a similar um, end goal of like healing and enlightenment, whatever it is. Um, and I think also if you have someone that's like totally ruining your space, like being able to say not for me and get up because that's something I struggle with too in a lot of those containers. Oh, is, I'm always, I love she's getting clear. up and that's leaving. That's great. I yeah, am on, learning. On psilocybin, off She'll psilocybin. Leave in the middle of it. <laughs> I'll yeah. get up and leave in the middle of an interview. I yeah, have. she has. Um, that's amazing. Many live ones But too. yeah, like I, uh, yeah, because that's the thing. And like, yeah, I, I've never, um, I've never done it recreationally as a, of like, let's party now, but I've certainly done it recreationally as in like, yeah, not laying down with an eye mask, mm -hmm. you know, but I think it's always like, I'm always doing it at a time when I'm looking for some kind of an answer to something. Yeah. I, I suppose you would look at it that way. I wouldn't say that's recreational. Though. I think that's like a solid intention for using it. Oh, yeah. I was just yeah. like, sometimes I was smiling and laughing. So it felt no, recreational. That's nice, though. That's beautiful. Wait, feeling joy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's like when you do it with your friends that you really love, it is really special. Mm -hmm. Like it just feels like... I don't know. It just feels some of my most unforgettable nights. One of them was at that concert. That was probably a, a little reckless to do it at that concert, but uh, it was fun and I don't regret it. But like that was so much fun because I felt very connected to the people I was with. And then you're in this concert and this band is a very powerful band. And you're like with these people that are really excited. So it felt like- Oh, you're talking about Tool. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was I was like, not Skank Fest, right? Okay. No. <laughs> okay, okay. No, I didn't do Mushrooms. That's that was Acid. Skank yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Acid. Um, but yeah, and I did it once with my now boyfriend. We weren't dating at the time. And it was one of the best days of our lives. That's and it was because we were like fun kids literally running around naked in the woods. And, I was and like, if you're in a place awesome. too where you can do that, then that's great. But if you're working on trauma stuff or sure. you know yeah. that there's a lot pent up, then that's like, not I would some... not start there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so like when someone is looking to start out on this, like say someone's never used... Uh, used. It feels like I'm talking about meth now. Um, you, uh, how do you, how would you recommend starting this journey? I think you find like a true master in the space, like someone that has been doing it since like the seventies, right? Someone that was yeah. like Terrence McKenna and Ram Dass. Yeah. yeah. Heavy hitters, baby. Right. Like, so find like someone who's actually like trustworthy in mm. that space because the thing is is they're going to lead you down whatever path you need to go like it's not like yeah. i want to come in and i want to do mdma and then i want to do bufo and i like right gonna say, no 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 yeah, i'm right. going to give you what i think that you need and then oh. we're going to do the work so it's um it should be like master led and not student led right yeah, that makes sense and, and in this space like what does it take to become a master besides working with some of those names that you listed like is there any like is there like gr degree is there training that's like respect it does I don't Not I've never really. heard of that. No, yeah. As far as like more of like the Western approach, you've got right. maps and anyone that might be affiliated with that, but you mm -hmm. want to be careful because people are making false claims of working with maps oh. and then they're handing out stuff like M MDMA that's laced and then that's hey. super dangerous. So you Ooh. think you're doing it and then you take fentanyl and then it's like lights out. So oh. you do want to be super, super careful. And again, it's like knowing people that have worked with that practitioner before. Sure. Mm -hmm. Personal referral. And what are your what are your thoughts on like ketamine therapy? That's a uh, kind of, you know, that's like a new thing there's like ketamine therapy spaces yeah. where you can in, in new york where you can go in there's places where you can get it mailed to you like what's but but also it's one of the most popular recreational drugs as well it's also highly addictive that's so wild oh it's, it it's is highly, highly addictive, addictive. Really? i actually didn't know that yeah, yeah, no i did, says that it's I highly did, addictive i did a company that sent it to my house and it just made me you that's take a so nap. wrong it's yeah. so wrong to have these like companies that just do a two minute intake form and yeah, mail it to very someone's brief. house. You don't know if they actually need it. You don't know how much they're taking. You yeah. don't have anyone there for the integration afterward and like to explain what they just went through. And again, it's highly addictive. So I think if you're doing Damn. something ketamine, I know people that it's helped out tremendously. It's not to write it off, but I think that if you're doing it, you want to do it very consciously and carefully and make sure that there's someone there to like hold your hand through the process. And also if you are more prone to like addiction, if you have like an addiction problem or um, like a compulsion mm. problem, like that might not be a good place to to start so like ex extreme mm. accountability as to where you are as a person as well so if like you can't like mm. even yeah. put your phone down for a day maybe don't start with something that's addictive because there's so I many didn't even other know things that, was that addictive. aren't mm -hmm. yeah shit yeah. Whoops. If I knew that, I probably wouldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, yeah, I didn't get hooked it on it. It works for some people beautifully, right? Like yeah. for a lot of people, they have like a, it's, um, 
they kind of compare it to like a more gentle psilocybin. Mm. Yeah. So for some people, it maybe did feel that, very gentle, yeah, which that I makes liked. Sense, but and there's a, I watched a documentary. It's uh, psychedelics are so incredible, and I and I always try to like watch myself to not be too excited. I get very excited about things that I'm excited about. Um, but there's so many stories about psychedelics that really do frame it as a cure all, not mm -hmm. for everybody. Yeah. But there's a there was a documentary that I rented on Amazon about the aboga root, which is a tree in Africa, and the root is one of the most potent psychedelics and the documentary filmmaker followed around his friend who was a um a functioning heroin addict which i did not know was a thing i didn't know you could be functioning and addicted to heroin mm -hmm. but it's very prevalent which is fucking wild mm -hmm. not wild when you think about the oxys being you know delved out by doctors but um so this woman was struggling with heroin for about 20 years and she did two sessions sometimes it only takes one but uh, you know with some people that are more extreme it takes multiple times she went to a shaman in canada she did two sessions and one of the biggest things with heroin addiction is coming down off of it is so dangerous and can be lethal right. and mm -hmm. feels like hell and feels like you're dying the worst death you could dream of. And so we have these methadone clinics in New York City, for example, that help people stop being on heroin, but then they're addicted to methadone. It's just as addicted and coming off of that is just as awful. Mm -hmm. And this aboga root, this woman did a ceremony with this aboga root twice, two weeks apart, and she fucking cured her heroin addiction mm -hmm. with zero come down, no withdrawals. Mm -hmm. And the withdrawals are the most like awful part um, from everything I've, I've looked into. And I'm like, how are we not? I mean, probably capitalism, but because other than- you can only need two. Yeah, yeah. one or two. Right. That's why. And it's not mm -hmm. something that somebody's gonna need for the rest of their lives, mm -hmm. but it's like, wow, we really value money over people. It's really sad. I know a lot of people that have had to go to South America that have had like serious addiction issues and this, they say the same thing is one aboga trip and it's wow it's, it's one gone. and done yeah wow mm -hmm. yeah um you mentioned you did this trip with psilocybin with the shaman and then you got pregnant a week later or two weeks later one or two weeks later that's incredible yeah. how did your body how did you feel like mentally and in your body leading up to that point after? i oh after yeah um just like aligned like nice. aligned like everything I whether I got pregnant or not it was fine like less attachment to it as well yeah. like I knew I wanted another baby but if it was just the one I was like what a blessing to even have gotten pregnant once mm -hmm. and and you just, genuinely felt that you weren't yeah, like forcing yeah, yeah. yourself to feel it no, to see no, the no. bright it side it was like That's a true amazing. acceptance for whatever like was in store for me Damn. Um, yeah and it like that can be so peaceful for someone who's struggling with fertility issues or whatever it mm -hmm. is because it's it's hard it's like I'm a woman and I'm not even able to do this thing I'm like meant to do. Like yeah. that's a horrible feeling. Um, so being able to come to peace with something like that is amazing. Mm. Had you had, like when you got married to your husband, had you had conversations like prior about, I mean, I'm guessing about having a family or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He knew that I was probably not going to be able to have kids. Oh, oh. So he knew that oh, before you guys yeah. got married. That mm -hmm. wasn't something. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I was with someone, um, a previous long-term relationship. And that was actually one of the catalysts that like stopped the relationship because he really wanted kids. And then when he wow. found out that I had health stuff, it was like all wow. downhill from there. Can you speak a little bit about that? Because I think like, yeah, I mean, obviously if you want children and you can't, that's heartbreaking. But I think like that is that is something that's kind of expected of us. And like one of the main things that we, we've talked about this a lot that like in a heterosexual relationship, like it's almost like an expected duty uh, for the woman. And I, and I do think in many men's eyes that we lose value um, if we cannot or or do not want, want to be mothers. So like, what? how did that make you feel? when things went downhill after having that conversation? I think I think that you're allowed to design the future that you want. And if that sure. if that looks like having kids that and someone can't, like it's just that is radical honesty. And I would rather yeah, that's him, the word I was looking for. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd yeah, rather yeah. him tell me that than yeah. drag me along and, and then have this resentment and then we're just not right for each other anyways. So he can go find someone that can have kids with my husband. Mm. Um, now it was like he was indifferent to kids. Like he didn't know if he wanted them or not. So mm -hmm. it certainly wasn't a deal breaker. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and just like finding like your right person. So I think we assign value to everything. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's where like value making machines. So if someone yeah. values having a partner that can have kids and that's good for them, I mm -hmm. think where it's wrong is like the way that my ex went about it was just like very inhuman. It was just mm. like immediately oh, I, you cut know you I mean? off. Right. And we had been together for so long. So it's Shit. like not even treating me like a human. Like years also, and years. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. having a, a, a real experience. You know what I mean? 
Um, so it's all in how I guess you approach it sure. and just like being honest with yourself and the other person as to what you want because it, again it's it's anything like if you want to be in like a poly relationship and then you don't want to have that conversation with someone and you're just cheating on them that's yeah, also right. not okay and that happens a lot yeah, sure yeah yeah so yeah I think it's honesty. like it's whatever you want like if you're a woman that doesn't want kids and, and you know that like you truly know that that's your decision that's great and I'm, I'm glad that you know that and mm-hmm. vice versa but I think you want to be conscious of making that decision like you don't want to blindly go into having kids because you feel obligated sure and you don't want to not have kids because you also feel that that's like betraying yourself and like your own destiny so it's right. just like whatever your decision is just like make it consciously yeah mm-hmm. have you ever read the untethered soul yes. but so a yeah. lot of what you're saying and your philosophies and thinking and how psychedelics helped you it seems like it's it's pushing you more towards this mindset that michael singer talks about and one of the things that he talks about that it's still like hard to grasp is not wanting anything is the key to a good life. And I'm, and I still like, I, I get what he's saying, but there's then it's like so fun to want things and like set goals for yourself. So I guess there's ways to work around it. But like another key of, of his kind of philosophy is just don't cling to anything and like really accept what happens to you. And he, he argues that it is possible for a human being every second of their life to feel so much joy that you could just cry at any moment because you're so overwhelmed by how beautiful everything is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I do think that is true. And the closest I've ever been to those moments were on psychedelics. So I'm like, okay, I don't know. See, I feel like after I had my kids, um, I, I can access that a lot more. It's almost like my heart just got like cracked open a little bit more with each one of them where I can get into that state of just like overwhelmed for how beautiful everything is. I the, Where I deviate from a lot of the spiritual teachings, which is like get rid of desire and want, mm. and, like that's your suffering. I think we're, we're supposed to crave and desire yeah. things. I think it's if you're coming from a satiated place and you want something, but you already feel full, I think that's amazing. And then that's alignment. And that's when things start to manifest manifest and show up for you mm. but if you're wanting things out of scarcity out of lack a out of fear. fill my cup i think yeah. that's a problem because if you're trying to fill yourself and your needs from everything external like you're never going to be full it's like one of those like hungry ghosts situations you have to for do sure. that inside before you can go outside and play yeah well yeah. i mean that goes into like you know kind of like wiccan philosophies or like anyone who's like high level astrology like like you know to sum it up uh currently like the universe hates a thirsty bitch like <laughs> yeah so that's like way to sum it up the universe can like sense like desperation and mm-hmm. you know they're kind of never but i think that's like the, the same thing is so it's like whether you're going from like a wiccan or astrology or something more classic like catholicism or judaism it's just like you're you know i don't think god you know or whatever you believe in is like answering um you, you know desperate prayers which i think is so often how we see it portrayed i mean in media Mm -hmm. you know someone you know a plane is crashing and you're like praying for it but it's like there's like a larger thing going on here i don't know that it's like your desperate plea in the moment in the moment you know it's it's hard to grasp though because so many people are only uh participating in the spiritual when things are really bad Mm -hmm. which is like kind of what you're talking about with the psychedelics it's like uh it's like a disrespect for it Mm -hmm. it's like that's that's for me like why i kind of like I'm like either I'm gonna like pray or or be religious in some way every day or I'm not gonna do it at all because mm-hmm. if I'm only doing it when I'm like desperate for something that feels like other people should have access to it before me because mm-hmm. I didn't make um I didn't make any kind of like uh, commitment to it. Mm-hmm. Do you know who um, Napoleon Hill is? Did either of you read Outwitting the Devil? Mm-mm, it's no. an incredible book. I always suggest it on audio because they play like the devil's voice and it's it's eerie. <laughs> cool. It's amazing. Love a good audio book. Um, but he talks about prayer and he kind of, it goes into like quantum and energy and mm. basically like attracts like. So if you're praying from a place of desperation, like all you're going to get is despair. If you're praying from like have not, you will always have not. So when you pray, it has to be like, first you have to connect to heaven and earth and like mm. clear everything and then you can ask. And come mm. from like a more pure place mm-hmm. that's what's so interesting because it's like no matter what we think like all all religions are so similar because like what you just described yes. so that's like in paganism that's the rule of three like whatever energy you cut you're putting out into the universe is coming back to you threefold so mm-hmm. it's all the same stuff mm-hmm. it, 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 that's they, why when people yeah. are like i'm not into like even like you know uh, with like more woo woo stuff when people are like i'm not into organized religion it's like well you are because like yeah you just like, deconstructed like, it exactly yeah. The same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the best piece of advice that i've gathered so far i'm like i've read a 
lot of books over the past uh, five years on like trauma and and spirituality and go, like all all types of things. I've like dove into like the magic of books and the knowledge I can give you. And the best piece of information I've gotten so far is everything you do and say comes from either one of two places, love or fear. And that's how you kind of fact check, like, is this a good decision or am I making it out of love or am I making it out of fear? It's very easy to tell, you know, because mm -hmm. those feel completely different in your in your body. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, you talked about um, where your, your publicist sent some bullet points in the email and one of them that caught our eye was creating an anti-fragile marriage and you mentioned oh, yeah. radical honesty which Corinne and I were talking about like we were like oh that that's interesting because I don't know what that means um, but it we felt were, like yeah I had never heard that phrasing before and I was like it feels like I, like radical honesty <laughs> but is that a concept that is integrated into the anti-fragile or I, I think so yeah. yeah so it's the idea of being like strong right like you can have a really strong base but it's still going to break sure the idea of being anti-fragile is actually it like takes on the strength of whatever the opposition is so uh. if you like were to throw the vase it gets stronger like every every mm. opportunity or every struggle is like a moment to grow and get sure. more resilient so it's not avoiding things because of your comfort or his comfort or her comfort whatever it mm. is um, it's leaning into that and like it's some it's kind of like this idea um i had this jamie wheel we went to like one of his um retreats and he's like sometimes compassion is like chopping off someone's head with a set like a samurai sword and you're like whoa that's like a really um intense image but if you think about like a horse so i used to have horses so this relates more to like the way i think is if you have a horse that's injured like the most compassionate thing is to put it down so sometimes like, honesty and compassion isn't like fluffy it doesn't feel good but it's necessary mm. so i think when you're in especially a committed relationship it's if we're gonna do this in the long term I can't do like that old adage that gets me every time which is like pick your battles like fuck that no everything you need to sort out like otherwise it just gets like built up and built, built up and built up yeah and that, that's that the is, worst advice ever it's hard to repair resentment right that I, breaches that that put that kind of puts like a semi-permanent wall up it's one of like they have like the four apocalypse or four, four horsemen of the apocalypse mm -hmm. that, like predict divorce and resentment is like one of them I don't mm. remember the other ones but, oh interesting yeah, so it's like the worst advice you could ever have is just like pick your battles no, like everything, radical honesty, and then also creating mm. a space where um, like they can trust to come to you with whatever it is and you don't just like burn the house down because yeah. you don't like it. Right. So it's like, I'm doing this out of love and for what's best for the unit, not because I'm trying to pick on you and like trusting that as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I have like a rant plan for the intro we're going to record later. That's exactly has to do with that because I, I found this book that really nails when when you're in a romantic relationship, it magnifies stuff and love and hate are so close together. And if you have a wound that's like a um, like a, an abandonment wound, for example, and you feel like your partner's abandoning you and you get that rush of like, this is it's happening again. It's, and you get so mad at them. And if they don't understand that that's what's happening within you, they're going to be like, what the fuck? Like, you know, it's, it's really hard to to get to a place where because it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to tell that like oh I'm not I'm yelling at you but that's not what I'm mad at it's mm -hmm. really hard to get there like mm -hmm. have you had those types of arguments with your spouse and if so like how do you find your way out of the woods oh my gosh he's incredible like I feel like I'm one of the luckiest people on the planet so I will get into a space like that and you can't see your own shadow right, so right. It's, it is impossible so if you have you something feel nuts. yeah you feel nuts and your emotions and your hormones take over and you immediately are five years old and your dad's leaving and you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. and like that it has no nothing to do with whatever argument you're in with your partner but he is so able to like recognize that immediately we had a moment um like it was this year and it was like a really big fight I was like going through like postpartum depression mm. and it was just really really tough and I exploded and he just like sat there and he was like letting me get it out and he got like so sad and it like still makes me Aww. emotional because he's like I just saw like the five-year-old girl that was like scared of being abandoned yeah mm -hmm. you know yep. so he can just like see it and he doesn't take it personal right and he right. allows me so to key. like heal that wow mm -hmm. and then i can so the love that you have together whew, that's yeah. strong mm -hmm. that's like a beaut that's like what a relationship could be like the most beautiful parts of a, a romantic relationship where you're so connected and you respect each other mm -hmm. it's so hard to fix <laughs> up yeah. personally but it is possible that's yeah did 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 he was he always like that or did you grow to well, yeah, we've definitely grown a ton since we've met each other, but he's always How long been have you been together? 13 years. Oh, oh, okay. oh wow. nice. Yeah. Okay. It yeah. takes time. It takes time. I mean, mm -hmm. we're both very different people and we constantly are checking in to make sure we're like growing in the right direction because mm -hmm. that's also crucial is like mm -hmm. having someone that's willing to 
go on the journey with you. Um, but I mean, the man that he's turned into is incredible and he's never not working on himself. And Damn. yeah, he just is like the most introspective person I know. So if you, I come at him, he never for a second takes it personal. He's like, I know it's something else. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. And it's incredible. And it provides a place for me to like truly be healed and like, no, like this is um, like what a man is supposed to be, right? Yeah. Like this is like right. the dad that I want for you my kids. You dreamed of for your children. Exactly. And you do need to see examples. Like Corinne is really good at not taking stuff personally. And that helped me not to take stuff personally because I took a lot of stuff personally. And I just needed to see like, oh, you're reacting in a way that if that happened to me, I would be pissed. And I'm now seeing that there's absolutely no need to be angry whatsoever. That's like an old thing. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, hard to take choice. stuff not personally too because I'm so obsessed with myself. <laughs> You're like, well, how is this not about me? <laughs> we all are, right? Right, yeah. yeah we all are. Um, going back to the postpartum. Now, did you, so you used um, psychedelics to get, uh, open yourself up to the second child. Did it, was that helpful or did you use that all with postpartum depression? No, I didn't because mm. um, I'm breastfeeding and like oh, we don't know how much goes of course, the milk, Of course, of course, of course. Course. Yeah, it wasn't an option. Your baby's like, what? Up? Just he's already <laughs> comes in tripping, and now everything yeah. is like exponential. <laughs> so then, what do you do? Like, what is like, what is the Western approach to postpartum? Like, we've had people with postpartum before, but like, no one's really. It, there's get, no like, way out. It's, no one seems to be getting the help they need, quite well, honestly. I have a hot take on postpartum yeah, depression. Yeah, hot He's, take it up. Give I it honestly us. think like probably most of it is bullshit. I think that... Like if, the existence of it? How we're labeling it. Oh, because I think how, every, it's part of it. It's, it's because of modernity. So whenever mm. would you have a mom that had a baby and you send her home to be by herself with this baby to do everything. Well, realistically, if like how many dads get paternity leave, it's not a lot. For sure. It's a couple weeks at yeah. best. So you send her home with no support system. There is no tribe. And then we call that depression. No, we like yeah. it's fucking this bullshit. This happens to women. This You're happen to women since You're the beginning drowning. of fucking time. You're supposed to yeah. be surrounded by elders and like your aunts and your sisters Community. and your moms. Like in Asian culture, you don't get out of bed for two weeks. You don't leave the house for 40 days. Everyone wow. is taking care of the mom. We have like these babies showers and that's great and fun but like what what about the mom she just went through this i 100 yeah, percent agree man. with you could yeah. not agree more this, oh the because mom. <laughs> uh, we hear a lot of moms say like the after i had the everyone was asking me how i was when i was pregnant the second the baby came out no one gave a shit no. and i was the ba the baby needed me to feed mm -hmm. it the baby needed my body yeah. my tits the bit and you're just like this walking fucking milk carton you're healing it takes such a long time to get back to like your baseline your hormones are crazy you're so weak i mean i couldn't pick up my toddler for six weeks because oh, mm. then you could like have have serious like hemorrhaging oh, problems. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Damn. Yeah. There's so, so much so that we don't talk like, about. So the this. tribe. So we we take away all of these things that you absolutely need. Like we're social creatures, and we say, "Oh, you're depressed." Like no, there's like a huge social problem that's behind this. And like you said, it's everyone's there to celebrate you while you're pregnant. And then how many of your friends come over to like, check on you, right? Or bring you food, or be like, "Is there mm. anything you need? Let me take the baby so you can sleep." Yeah. Um. And they say like, "Sleep when the baby sleeps." Like fuck. You. The yeah. baby's in my room. They can smell my milk from a mile away. It's not going to happen. Like you need support. So mm. I think if we mm -hmm. were to fix that baseline and just like have that support system, I would think you would see a lot of the depression not happen. So what would it look like if you had if you had an unlimited budget and you had a company where you can make an experience for a mother postpartum the best that you from your knowledge of that it could be? What what would you have instilled? Uh, so we were actually like toying with this. Like, do we create a yeah. virtual community? There's one I think it's called um, maybe motherly I'm not sure mm -hmm. um, but there is one company that's kind of doing it looks like they're more UK based or like India based um, but you would have essentially like to have do you know the app next door mm -mm. So um, it's by like your geolocation and people post like, oh, I saw this possum in my yard or have you seen my goat or whatever. It's like, just like, <laughs> it's like a Hell quick yeah. chat for like people in the area. So you would okay. have kind of oh, like cool. um, a next door, but for moms and people that had resources for moms. So whether that was a, po a postpartum doula, someone who was um, really well educated in like postpartum nutrition and like mm. making real wholesome foods that will help you heal, having someone come over for postnatal massage, having yeah. someone come over to just like take care of the baby 
maybe during oh. the night. Like, because I was like, I would do that. Like, if there was an app for like people in my building and this, someone like, was like, can you like? I actually, <laughs> it's so fun. Funny. I was actually gonna like offer to my neighbors. I'm like, hey, like I'll like I don't need the money, but like I would sit your kids, you know, just because like you know, sometimes I feel like I need some like kid training. Not because I want to have kids. I just I'm like, yeah, I don't never around them, and it's weird to not be around a certain yeah. type of person for a long period of time. For me, it's children. You know, <laughs> they come into my store, but other than that, so I, I was gonna offer, but then I'm like, that looks that that's a weird that's a weird thing right, to because offer. People are paranoid now. I get about it though, that kind right? Of because stuff. it's not yeah. like a, we don't live in a, a like a, a village like community. Because right. like in other t- time periods mm-hmm. or other places, that would be a completely normal ask for me. It looks like I'm up some kind of a predator, <laughs> right? Right. You know? And there's so there's a lot of communities I've read about. Like if somebody in the community has depression, they all like gather around them and just like fucking huddle and in support of that one person, and it really helps with their with their mental illness. And uh, I can't imagine how potent it would be for women. Like, oh man. Right. And then you also have to have the time too. So if you have someone that's like a counselor or a spiritual teacher or whatever your modality is, you have to have the time to be able to meet with them for like that hour a week or hour a day or whatever it is that you allow for yourself. Um, But to have someone to check in with and like for them to hold you accountable is also really important Mm. because you get in this loop and then you don't want to move. Um, which is then like making you feel even worse. And then you, mm. you're you not like losing baby weight and then that makes you feel worse. And it's like, you just have to on. make the decision and then we that fucking, I don't want to do this anymore. And we call that postpartum depression. That is a fucking joke. Right. That's such a fucking joke. Wow, we got to stop doing that. Yeah, it's just like an utter lack of community and connection. Yeah. Yeah, Com- community and connection is like the, it's, it's you know, the books I read to say connection's the opposite of trauma, connection's the opposite of addiction, but it also can really help with your mental health. And I feel like even too, like having people come over, people who do have babies, new babies, older babies, but also people who don't have kids to come over so you could socialize and just like experience. Mm. Mm-hmm. Tell me a story about your day. Like, you know, just something. Feel human a little bit. Yeah, adult yeah. interaction. Yeah, because I think one of the things like, uh, the complaints, especially in modern times when it's like more accepted for mo- moms to actually like complain about motherhood, which I think is completely should be completely on the table, uh, is like a loss of identity. Like once you become a mom, like you're om- like you, it's like almost like you stop being a woman. Like I remember being really upset uh, after Kim Kardashian had kids and then like she posted sexy photos of herself and then everyone's like, you're a mom, you can't do that. And I was like, what fuck in the off. absolute fuck yeah. are you talking talking about like that like just uh, it's like you're taking away someone's sexuality and a big part of who they are and how they feel free to express themselves because they're a mom like that's horrible and I think a horrible uh lesson to set for your children mm-hmm. and I'm I feel like women do that to oh, other women more than men yeah I think it's like it's, yeah I mean there's I a so. there's a lot I mean it was men and women like um, but I think it's you know it's coming from different places like men Different like fears don't want mm-hmm. women to be powerful in two ways i guess because i think the two ways that men often see women as powerful are like in their sexuality and then in being a mother but there's like other ways to be powerful. so many more ways than that <laughs> and then for women i feel like it would come from women who maybe became mothers and then don't have Kardashian money to get that body back, you know? Like, yeah. never. I mean, most of us never had a Kim Kardashian <laughs> body. So, like, what are we getting back? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. But did you feel any of that around? Yeah, I get yeah. that a lot. That yeah. idea that you're somehow supposed to split off from right. like, literally your life force, right? Like, that is creative energy. Like, that is the purest form of creation is like sexual energy. Like, yeah. Like creating God a life right. and a, bringing a soul into this world. Yes. Um, there's like this archetype that's like the maiden, the myth. Uh, or yeah, the maiden, the mother and the myth. Uh And the idea is to kind of encompass all of them. We go through the stages as women, as we age, but it's not to discard the younger versions. It's to actually integrate them as you evolve. So the maiden is like this beautiful, young, curious explorer. And she's got like this vibrancy for life. And then you have the mother and she's like there to protect. And she's like very much in that strength. And then you have um, the... uh, myth Mm -hmm. and she is or the crone and she's like this aged woman she's got wrinkles on her face and she's like the guiding wisdom Mm -hmm. right and it's not to lose your sexuality once you get to the crone but it's like to embrace it and I'm sure like as you age you can meet like these older women that still have like this beauty and this aura around them and you're like that's a force sexy they have they didn't discard it right they didn't let people tell them to get rid of it it Mm -hmm. just looks a little bit different like you're always elevating hopefully and growing so it just 
like transmutes into something else. So uh-huh. people want you to split that off. And it's like, no, that's a whole person. That's very much a whole person. Why don't we ask dads to not be sexual because they're a dad that's crazy? So yeah. why is it? Why are we doing that? Yeah, to it's women? like accepted to get like hit on by your friend's dad. It's like, what are we even talking about? Here? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I dreamt of that as a kid. <laughs> that's that's wild stuff. Um, uh, Not that I know people are not their occupations, um, but just out of curiosity, what does your husband do? What's his occupation? He's an investor, an entrepreneur. So he has like- Surprising. Wow. Plus. Yeah. What, and a spiritual guy who's yeah. like really grounded in those words. Not is the he, answer I was expecting. Does he have a yeah. traumatic background? And no. from his, wow. No just like a good dude. Just a great dude. Fuck yeah. And what he's actually doing right now, so he's investing in that human promise that I inve- uh, like brought up earlier. Yeah. Um, he's specifically targeting like entrepreneurs and CEOs and like these Fortune 500 guys because the idea is, is if you can instill that perspective on that level, then you can really facilitate change, right? Like yes. If you're approaching yes. things from more empathy and less from like profit, then like yes. everybody benefits. Oh, yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. That would be beautiful. Um, you Another point that was talked about in the email that was interesting, um, how to raise masculine boys in a world that demonizes men was how it was worded. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm curious what, how, how old are your boys? They're super young. So almost four and then a baby. So so have you noticed, like, have you watched them? I don't have kids, so I have no idea, but I I have a nephew and I was there the day he was born and it was really cool to see, but I'm not there with him day to day. So I don't know how much stuff gets pushed on him and how much stuff he's genuinely interested in. Mm -hmm. But like, do you find that your, your sons have this natural inkling towards like masculine things or are they just their own person or does gender not really, they don't give a shit about gender until they don't even know about that yet. So there's this concept that's called pruning and it's, um, it's like it's so this is neuroscience like when they hit about seven they lose a ton of their neural connections Mm. because they they don't serve you for an evolutionary purpose so their brain is undergoing like wild transformation it's just like not available and they don't care yeah yeah they don't care like there's um kids like boys in class that have braids and glitter and whatever and like no one is picking on them like they're just like oh that's just so and so that's what tyler likes to do yeah it's it's like not a big deal at (laughs) Mm -hmm. all so i feel like a lot of the times it's the parents that are pushing these constructs on the kids where if like you're a boy you can't wear nail polish automatically you must be a girl and like that's a whole other conversation it's like why don't you let them blossom and like see what they truly want to do instead of like forcing your own thing and like this um, pressure that we feel societally to like I don't know what it is see we're talking about fights that end relationships like one of the fights that ended my like most important relationship was literally like we're talking about like having a uh, hypothetically having a kid mm-hmm. and it was like it was like a news show brought up the topic but then you know you discuss it and it was just like if your kid wanted to wear a your boy wanted to wear a dress to school would you let him yeah. and my answer was I would absolutely let him but I would before he went tell uh, communicate to him that other people People are probably going to make fun of you. You might get problems. You might even get like someone might try to hit you. But of course you can wear it. But I just I would never want to send them in blindly like everyone's going to love your yeah. dress, Tommy. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah that yeah. wouldn't be fair. And, and, That'd it, be cool. and yeah. my partner at the time was like, like, absolutely no, like he's not wearing a dress. And I'm like, like I, it's just like for me it's like so rigid for it's no also reason like yeah it's like knowing me that long it's like you know like i'm like the creative free spirit like mm-hmm. yeah of, of course i'm gonna let my boy wear a dress if he wants to yeah. like what and i <laughs> i over the last two months i have had the absolute pleasure of meeting t- uh, multiple kids like four of them uh one was trans and he like was so uncomfortable in his body uh, when he was born a woman and like really distressed and stressed out and his parents like okay like let's see what the options are and then now he's able to like be himself and you just see like oh you're happier and these kids that I met they're so confident and they so know who they are and I'm like damn I'm jealous of that confidence like I we all had that at one point you know and Mm -hmm. it kind of gets chipped away as you get older and you try to regain it back but I'm like also these kids like they really I don't know. They're very sure of themselves. And it's like, it all seems like the adults problem. Like it, all of it definitely is an adult problem for sure. And I think when it comes to like body dysmorphia or gender dysphoria, um, like that usually shows up really early. Right? Mm. And there are like some very telltale signs about that. So like denying that the existence of that, I think is crazy. Um, I think what I see happening is that we're trying to like act like it's more prominent than it is. Right. So if you see yeah. someone's gender expression that sure. doesn't align 
line a stereotype, then you see parents that because they don't want to make the politically incorrect move, mm. that they're like, oh, well, they must be this instead. Yeah, and I think right. that that's super harmful. And it's yeah. also not acting with integrity within your own child and like to protect them. So I think, again, every situation is going to be different. Like, and go to a professional to see if that's what's going on so that you can take care of your kid, right? And like let them express themselves how they need to or do the changes or whatever. Yeah. Um, like the social changes. But when it comes to like forcing on like, I guess, stereotypes, I think that that's harmful. Yeah. It's like um, leaving, or pushing you in one direction. Right. Like it just yeah. doesn't. I think it's about leaving the door open when you're, yeah. when you're dealing with like children. It's just like, he, he, like presenting options, even like, and you can do that in many ways. Like for me, it was like done, uh, not so much for like sex or gender, just cause like I didn't, I wasn't questioning that, but like, I think even like religion, like mm -hmm. I was offered, you know, because my parents were different religions too. I was like offered multiple, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like they're doing the one. They're like, we'll show you some of this. We'll show you some of this. And then I was like, I'm going to do a third one. But, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, Which but I'm shit. familiar with the, the, the two options that were presented and no one ever was like, you have to do this. Yeah. And I think that was great. Mm -hmm. And it's also a matter of like humanizing. Cause one of the kids that I had met the, uh, my friend who was with me at the time was like, yeah, I watched this child born one gender and then eventually like it, it, working towards transitioning and I see how much happier he is. And this was a person that like might have voted Republic, like very like, oh, what is this bullshit? Rolls your, the eyes the second you start talking about anything of this nature. And he was like, I will never doubt the existence of the genuine existence of a child's uh, gender dysphoria ever again. Cause I watched it and I'm like, oh man, I wish we could, I wish we could humanize it for everybody. You know, but no, you should 100% treat everyone like a human. I don't think that there's ever an excuse to dehumanize anybody. Like, yeah, that's just but that's cruelty. why like the side of the people that are like, this is fucking bullshit. It's because they haven't humanized it yet, I think. Partially, but then you see like a pendulum reaction, right? Like I think that's how for some reason, like we still have like these monkey minds and we like, yeah. we just react and we react, react and still like trying to come to an equilibrium. So like, again, it very much exists 100 yeah. percent, and like for those people that it exists for like they should be allowed to do what they want to do um i think what happens is when you think that it's happening more often than not so um statistically speaking like if you have a kid and it shows up before puberty like a lot of times that kid might end up just being gay right like, right right so if like that's the case like you don't want to say being gay is wrong because that i don't believe that either so right. it's like well you're still young no being like, gay is boring and that's the problem these days because <laughs> <It's like, laughs> even the way you said it I, 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 like my oh, comedy cute. my comedy mind was like she's not wrong it's like yeah you're just gay snooze right fast. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but that's also Might so well be beautiful that guy. we're in a place uh, where yeah. that it's not like this triggering thing yeah, yeah. Right. so it's like not also again you have to know your kid and like if yeah. you're in that space of questioning to like bring in a professional so that you have like all you know yeah, like just all see, perspectives yeah um but not to like there are also consequences of doing like a social change if that's not actually what they're experiencing. right well there's a lot of helicopter parents around too and i mean i see it even in uh, in the dog park it's like oh my god <laughs> thank no, god the you only park. have a dog because <laughs> like they are just chasing Riddle. this dog around i'm like let and they the, yell the name let the dog, let dog. The dog <laughs> live oh my goodness <laughs> the second the dog starts humping like <laughs> Like I am, I, I look, get so freaked out. I look maybe like an abusive parent at the dog park to these other people. Cause I don't I'm just know what you chilling, mean. Chilling, watching the, I don't know the dog be a dog. We're it's, we're in a fence. Like we're, what's happening? People really do get They're stressed out about their dog. They're chasing them around. They're panting. They're, oh, I go, guy got everything. I mean, the amount of times that I've said, everything's going to be all right to someone <laughs> a at a dog park. park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I mean, funny. I literally <laughs> said to a woman, I was like, my dog, like, she, I, like my dog was like humping her dog. And I like went over, you know, just like, cause you know, dog trainers, like will often say like, you're supposed to just allow Let it because it's natural, but people don't like it socially. And I get that. So I'm not going to like <laughs> get, give them the, the whole speech about it. But I, she was like, trauma trauma and I go and I said to her I was like my dog didn't rape your dog like I said that <laughs> you know I'm probably not allowed in Boris and Horton anymore but like I don't know what is going on yeah, in people's girl, minds friend. like <laughs> it's so out of control I think they I, I guess it's just like the paranoia of like you know, maybe because we talk so much about how uh, our parents, you know, fucked us up in this generation that they don't want to be the parent that fucks their kid up yeah. too desperately. But yeah. it's but it's it's re a lot of helicopter parents where I'm like, I'm stressed out being around you mm -hmm. yeah, right man. now. Oh, yeah. That's and, yeah. That's one of the things that psychedelics gave to me. It was like <clears throat> the fucking ability to chill the fuck out and not be in fight or flight. Cause yeah. it was, it's very prominent. I'm like, what's your, so what's your approach on like, or, you know, cause you would know better on like how to, I'm guessing you're not a helicopter parent. No, like you have no, a calm no, no, energy, no. but like, how do you, 
to people who are get out of that space. Like, yeah. obviously, you're going to be constantly concerned about your kids. And I would be worried for your, all the time mm -hmm. that something was going to happen. But you can't you have to let them experience the world otherwise right. what was the point of having them yeah otherwise yeah. you're gonna cripple them like you're taking their legs out before they can even like walk or run so right. i mean think of how many times something bad has happened like bad has happened and sure like, i grew from this i learned from this yeah i won't do that again right yeah. you have to let them experience that so are they taking risks that like they're are they're not gonna like life they're not life-threatening right yeah so is it a risk that they might fall they might like even skin their knee right or, yeah. let them experience that let them experience other people um, mm -hmm. obviously like within bounds, you just have to check, like, is it coming from love or fear, which is what you talked yeah. about earlier. So if it's just constant fear, you're going to suffocate them. And that yeah. is not going to be a, a good adult parent relationship down the road, right? Like you're, you're not letting them grow into themselves. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, this has been an incredible conversation. Thank you so much for, for having it with us. Um, is there anything you would like to promote or, uh, and if not, or if so, in addition, where can we find you online where we can we get more of you? Um, you can go to chattingwithcandice.com um, and then all my handles are Candace Horback. But yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank this you. Amazing. We Yay. appreciate it. This thank has been so Guys We Fucked the Anti-Slut Chimming Podcast. We will talk to you next Friday. <laughs>